In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Come on. We all know that's not true. Words can hurt. Names can make us feel unclean, unwanted, unloved. We all know the feeling of that pain, that filth, that rejection. What about the words we say? Do we remember the pain and the filth that our words bring when we're dishing them out to others? After all, Jesus says, it's not what goes into you that makes you unclean. You can ignore the hateful words. Just because someone calls you a dirty name doesn't make it so. But Jesus said what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and that defiles a person. And that includes our words, our words of foolishness, of false witness, slander, wickedness, deceit, lies. The lies that we tell, lies about other people, the lies that we tell about ourselves, that's what hurts us and makes us unclean. In this section from Leviticus, we heard some regulations about sin offerings, particularly offerings for accidental sins. Really, we should call them hidden sins. Where a person was defiled, they were made unclean without realizing it or they forgot about it later. And that might sound a little strange at first. Why should you be guilty of something even when you didn't realize that it was wrong at the time? This is one of those places where the law of Moses works extra hard to imprison everything under sin. There really are no accidents. There are no excuses. There is no clear path to keep yourself totally pure and undefiled. No one gets out of this world with clean hands or with clean lips. You're a sinner and you live in a sinful world. It's that simple. And this is why we should plead guilty before God of all sins, even those we are not aware of, as we do in the Lord's Prayer. So a few particular sins are mentioned here in Leviticus 5. Staying silent when you're supposed to speak the truth. Another form of lying. Touching unclean things and not realizing it, which usually means you're not paying attention. You're not paying attention to what you're touching, to the sin that could infect you. You make a little excuse here, a little allowance there. It's no big deal until you realize you're trapped and you're telling lies about the danger that you're in to others and to yourself. And then there's rash oaths, careless, foolish oaths, promises that you don't intend to keep or that you never could keep or that you would regret if you did keep it. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, says Moses here, that if your promise is to do good or to do evil, good intentions don't save you from sin. When we get right down to it, all sin is a kind of lying. All sin wants to be hidden, tries to be hidden, so that we don't notice it, so that we don't call it what it is. We try to hide our sin from others. We try to hide it from ourselves. We try to hide it from God, but God sees the truth. He knows that all sin is lying, and all truth is confession. The more you lie, the harder it is to hear the truth. You, you double down. You lock yourself in the echo chamber of your bad conscience. When you don't hear the truth, you can't speak the truth. Sin tries to stay in hiding. But it must be revealed. 
because God delights in truth in the inward being, and he expects that that truth is going to be spoken, that it's going to be brought out of hiding, out into the open. So Leviticus says that with the sin offering that's brought to the priest must also come confession, truth-telling. When he realizes his guilt, he confesses the sin. And that means out loud. Get that sin out of hiding out in the open. God's going to deal with your sin one way or the other. Confessing it, bringing it out into the open, makes it possible for God to deal with your sin in mercy. And there is mercy, not because of any sacrifice that you have brought. Another lamb has been slaughtered in your place. His blood makes atonement for your sin. His blood makes you clean. And all the lies that you've told, all the ones that have been told about you, all the unclean things that you've touched and excused, all the promises that you've broken, none of that defines you anymore. It has no power over you. The gates of hell cannot keep you locked up in your sin. They cannot prevail against the confession, the truth-telling that Jesus is the Christ. The words of absolution, those words of power, the keys of the kingdom, they unlock the chains that bind you. You are forgiven. You are set free. Words can hurt. Lies about sin hurt, but the words of Jesus heal, and you are clean. You are wanted, you are loved, you are forgiven, and you live under the Father's grace. It's that simple. And with all that truth ringing in your ears, more truth comes pouring from your newly cleansed lips. The confession, the truth-telling, it keeps on going into praise. O God, you are justified in your words. You are blameless in your judgment. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Amen.